Well, it's been a minute here, so I figured it was time again. And this time around, I might as well just give a lot of people stress and a bunch of other people excitement by pulling apart this SP404 Mark II. For no reason. <laughs> None at all. Fuck it. Well, I am one of the lucky few who has managed to get his grubby hands on one of these. The incredibly hunted, much maligned for not showing up on time SP-404 Mark II. And not going to lie, I love the thing. So everybody who's waiting for theirs to ship or show up, uh, keep waiting. It's worth it. So it's a pretty awesome device. And I am not a... Uh, 404 guy. I have an A and uh, didn't really use it much. It's alright. I use it as an effect unit. I need. I, there was no visual feedback. It was hard for me to like get the unit. I didn't really like vibe with it much and I had other stuff to mess with so it wasn't at the top of my list of mess around devices. Um, but since arriving uh, I ordered this thing the morning of release like immediately. It was probably 8 in the morning the day they announced it. Um, just because I, I really like, I don't know, I like, I wanted it, I like the idea of it. Um, I figured I'd give it a shot, even though I wasn't so hot on the A, which I had just recently bought, probably a couple months before. Uh, a lot of the other guys on Common and Normal love these things. A lot of the, obviously, the low fly world loves this. Um, so I figured clearly, if if I wasn't vibing with the 404A, then it's you know probably. I just wasn't understanding it right and maybe that was because of the visual feedback element so I grabbed this so I can experiment with it more and there's a few other things on it that really turned me on the skip back recording and some of that other stuff so this wasn't really intended as a review that's not what I put the video together for it sparked out of a conversation I was having on messenger with one of the other dudes on common and normal Josh Johnson um, and the, the question was is all right well I wonder what the internals are like as far as storage on this thing because I had uh, pulled the SD card out of it to you know do a firmware update and basically everything still stays intact on the machine I and the question was like all right well how much is being stored on the card versus the internals basically everything the, the card is just exterior storage so everything that's on the card all it's doing is giving you a drive to pull samples from but once you load the samples into the unit um, everything stays in inside the machine and that is for all 10 banks across all 16 projects so basically everything's on deck and uh, the question was, uh, what does that look like? Is it another micro SD card? That's how the MPC Live works. If you pull that apart, the internal onboard storage is just another SD card inside the machine. Um, that was the question. Was that what it is? Well, I open it up, and it's not. It's uh, all solid state in there. But I figured that would be a good catalyst. That was, that was the catalyst I needed to decide to void a warranty and break this bitch open. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Because I like taking stuff apart. Let's do it. I was a little bit, I wanted to know whether or not you needed to take the faceplate screws off 
um, but you do not. Those are basically just to remove the, the face plate itself if you want to put a skin on top of it. When you bust this thing open, you got to be careful uh, after you get the bottom screws out because there's going to be two cables that connect on the inside. There's a power cable that runs to the batteries and then there is a, a bus ribbon that goes to the uh, inputs on the front of the, the unit, the, like the headphones and the, the guitar in and stuff like that or line in whatever it's not guitar but whatever so um, that's what those are and they're pretty fragile so you gotta make sure when you split it open not to bust them apart get in there real tight with needle nose or your hands pull it out so it's not an issue and you open it up you got the the main uh, boards here there's two boards there's a logic board and there's the actual controller board or the interface board I'm not sure what they're really called but um, basically where all the the buttons are and all the pots and the encoders and then all the actual logic circuitry so I'm gonna start by taking that logic board out I'm gonna be careful with that because obviously that's the brains and beef for the whole operation we screw that up and we're screwed so we don't want to do that uh, there's two cables on there one that connects the OLED in the front the other ribbon cable that actually connects the interface component to the logic component so I'm gonna take this mounting plate out and expose the fragile belly of the beast or whatever so I can unscrew the rest of the mounts that are actually connecting the controller board to the faceplate. I'm going to take these, there's, there's some clips that allow you to separate the, uh, the ribbon cable and the OED LED cable. So yeah, just be careful when you pull those apart. Okay, so let's get into the meat of the most important board in here. I mean, not that they're not all important, because without them you wouldn't have a 404, but this is the logic board. This is the one that's doing the heavy lifting for the actual device. So um, I, I'll preface this by saying I'm not... I'm not an engineer here. I'm no expert. I mean, I'm a real estate broker with a gear fetish. So this is just something that I enjoy doing. And I do mess around with, uh, you know, developing electronic stuff as an entertainment, but I'm by no means an expert or an electrical engineer here. So, you know, don't expect me to be super perfect with everything here. I'm just opening this up and guessing too. So basically what I'm looking at, the main component here is this chip in the center and that is a Roland BMC which is their proprietary system on a chip BMC stands for behavior modeling core uh, I don't really know much about what's going on under the hood here and I don't know uh, if anybody does outside of Roland because it is proprietary so uh, this is like their core uh, logic DSP board that kinda basically runs the whole show uh, as far as I know this is in a few of their other devices it uh, is this the new generation compared to their first one I think it was a sound system on a chip or something like that uh, I'm not I'm not exactly sure but I do know this is in uh, their newer devices I think the Jupiter 8 has it I think there's, there's a few other devices that are that are running with this chip also so this is the the main heavy DSP um, and and stuff like that you know that's the the, the main mover also we got over to the uh, left of that this uh, I mean it's kind of silly to name off the letters or whatever but this is a mm M I M X R T one zero six two uh, DVJ6B. It's a. It's by NXP Semiconductors, and it is a microcontroller. From what I can tell, they're a company based out of the Netherlands. Um, I think it's. From what I can gather, it is a variant of one of their ARM M7 processors, the IMX RT1060. So that's basically. Uh, it's a microcontroller. I'm not sure how that relates to the actual DSP, the modeling core itself. Um, but you know, that's what it is. This one above that, to I, it's really hard to tell. Even with the unit off, this isn't just lighting. Like the the actual text is very very difficult to read on this one. But what I could get out of it was that it was in uh, I, ISSI, which is Integrated Silicon Solutions. They're a California company, and they manufacture static RAM. So uh, SRAM is a volatile; it loses data without power. So this is basically. Uh, you know, I assume it's its caching system for you know quick operations. Maybe this is what um, you know where where it's loading things when you're actually opening up uh, a file to edit or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it's rendering, but that's most likely what it is. Again, I can't really see the numbers. The best I got out of it looked like two zero four seven. 
and then after that it really gets pretty grainy but IS2 ES160 something like that I don't know I couldn't find anything much about it below the NXP controller here is one of these the, the first of two ESMT which is Elite Semiconductor Microelectronics Technology Company out of Taiwan uh, I actually found a couple data sheets for this stuff and I will include links to those in the description below if you have the kind of nerd level that requires hunting into that stuff but as far as I could tell this is I couldn't actually find this exact number uh, the model number for this unit but uh, it, it I believe this is a uh, the SD RAM, which is a synchronous dynamic RAM, which is a different than the uh, the static RAM. So I think it's a DDR2. Uh, again, I couldn't really tell. That was well, the number that I got off of it was M125121632A6T. I yeah. So um, that was the best that I could come up with for that. And there's another. Uh, chip by ESMT over here also that is the M12L2561616A and I, I, I pulled the data sheet on that too that looks like it's it's also more SDRAM so I'm not exactly sure how they all relate to each other maybe it's separate for um, you know sample data versus system data or you know I, I would assume the processing for the, the, the effects and everything are inside the BMC chip but I'm not 100% positive on that. And then moving all the way to the right hand side here, we got two PCM chips, a PCM1802 uh, and a PCM4104. It's kind of hard to read, it's upside down. Both of those are Burr Brown products from Texas Instruments. So basically they're Texas Instruments. Uh, the first one, the PCM4104 is digital, digital analog converter. The other one is the analog to digital converter. And as far as I can tell, they're both 24 bit units. So uh, that's the, what I could pull basically from uh, you know just my cursory looking into this stuff um, a lot of the other things really they didn't have any uh, markings on them that were easy to hunt down and this was the the main uh, logic that I could see I didn't really see anything that indicated how any storage is happening so that was the whole point of this was to open it up and see if there was like a micro SD in there or something but I, I couldn't find anything like that so I don't know if uh, maybe that's something in the micro control I, I honestly I don't know I don't know where they're keeping all this information or how it's how it's running uh, how, how they're storing so much data I'm not honestly sure because that's a fair amount of information you know if you've got you know a bunch of ways some of the wave files that I've got loaded on mine are are, are beefy they're long they're long samples you know they're long you know chunks of track you know 40 seconds or whatever you know a long period maybe it's less than that but I mean it's there's still long you know big amounts of data and it's, it's pretty impressive that they're hoarding all of that for 16 projects with 10 banks of pop 16 pads on each bank so however they're storing it it's not obvious to me directly but uh, that's that's what I'm looking at here so there you have it and now you know and isn't your life better for that I know I've made good choices with my day <laughs>pull this interface board out a little bit here just to take a look basically these are all the conductive spaces that allow the pads to make contact you got the pots for uh, volume and the controls and the encoder knob up top uh, the actual pads themselves have a conductive layer on the bottom so when you hit the pad conductive layer touches the metal makes the connection completes the circuit you got a pad and you can actually see the levels to the pad that's how they get velocity so the harder you hit it the more uh, connection it makes they, they can tell you know basically the, the velocity that you're, you're hitting it with from that so uh, and that's pretty much the, the meat and potatoes here, this whole thing. It's not a, uh, there's not a lot to the device, but I mean, the logic that's in it is obviously killer. Um, sounds great. It's fun to use. And I mean, I honestly didn't expect to turn this thing into my daily driver when I got it. I've pretty much been an MPC guy. I love the MPC. I got a live. Uh, I'm not old school MPC. I, it's my first MPC I ever had was alive. I really kind of just got into hardware a handful of years ago. Um, 
you know, after a long hiatus, and before that, I was software guy. So I still use other infrastructures too, like Native Instruments and stuff. I love all that, and I have a ton of other samplers. But I, I really thought that the MPC would forever be the one that I kind of took with me everywhere, and it, and it is more powerful. Don't get me wrong, the MPC can do a lot more stuff and you can get a lot deeper in tweak a lot more things but there is a level of entertainment that comes along with the 404 at least in my opinion that is pretty hard to match it's it's small light battery power you can take it with you um it, the integration with your phone like i have a USB-C on my phone so it makes it super easy for me to record in from the phone to sample and then export out if i want to make a video directly from the unit without even moving cables around so i know everybody's pissed off waiting for this thing to show up at least at the time i made this video a lot of people still didn't have it but man hold on because this thing is worth it i definitely enjoy having it so anyway i I hope you got something out of this. This was apparently how I entertained myself. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Make good beats. Take care.